Good morning. This is the Desert Shaman, Roger Thunder. I'm sitting here. It's early in the morning. It is, let's see, what's the day today? The 26th of May. Wow, we're getting into June already. Just looking out the window here at the beautiful desert. I always look for clouds, and there is none today. Boo-hoo. Well, I love clouds, what can I say? To me, when I'm looking at a blue sky, it's like a canvas that hasn't been painted on. So I like to see movement. I like to see clouds. I thought I'd wax on and wax off. Very appropriate for a martial arts video. Fighting arts. I guess you could just say it's fighting arts as well. You know, martial arts, fighting arts. Um, whatever term you want to put on there. So I thought I would discuss a little bit about the spiritual aspects and the uh, applications from doing the martial arts. Let's say you're doing Tai Chi or let's say you're doing Aikido or let's Aikido or Taekwondo or Kendo, or, uh, Kendo, incidentally, is the art of the sword. Now, the art of the sword, I mean, when you're, when you're practicing Aikido, basically you're practicing the art of the sword as well. Because when you get into Aikido, and that was in the previous video, that was Morohayu Shiba's martial art that he created. When you get into that form or that art, you immediately are acquainted with the moves in that art. You, are, you become acquainted with uh, sword work with your hands. In other words, when you're using your moves or when you're using your circular moves or when you're using your joint locks or whatever you're doing. And incidentally, joint locks are a big part of Aikido. And also other uh, arts like Jiu-Jitsu, where Aikido actually came from. You're actually practicing the art of the sword because everything is a cut. When you move a certain way, it's a cut. When you go in with a hand or a shuto hand, which is a knife hand, okay, it can be this way or it can be this way or the thumb can be out so as not to break it or whatever. But when you're using the knife edge of your hand and you're directing when your opponent comes in and you use that hand to direct just like even in, in uh, Tai Chi, in that last video I did, you'll, you'll see Chen Man Ching using that same cutting motion. It's a cutting motion that is used. So when you're grasping or uh, putting a joint lock on your opponent or you're, you know, you're doing a, a, a temi, a T E M I, Atemi, Atemi, or Atemi, whatever. I don't know the correct, correct pronunciation in Japanese, but Atemi is a strike in Aikido. And some people think, well, Aikido, you know, it's, it's all passive and it's all created to subdue your opponent without. Uh, arming them. But there's several forms of Aikido and there's there's harder forms of Aikido where you use strikes to disable and you use joint locks and you use pinning techniques. You use circular techniques. So Aikido would be more or less a circular uh, dynamic sphere, okay? Actually, Aikido is called the dynamic sphere because it uses circular movements. It uses movements 
of your opponent against himself. It's a blending of your opponent's energy with your opponent's energy in order to neutralize it. You blend with it and then neutralize it, or you blend with it and then you use it to shoot that person off into a different direction or make them fly through the air or do a throw from a joint lock. A lot of times you will see, and like Aikido, you will see when you apply a joint lock, and a joint lock, there, there's an exercise in Aikido where you use, you go like this, okay, this is an exercise, because this is a joint lock. You place your thumb in between, about right in this area right here, in between the two bones, you grasp, and you twist to the outside, okay? So when you, when somebody strikes you, let's say, in a linear fashion, they strike you, and you, you know, or they go to punch at you, and you strike their hand, you automatically slide. As you shock, then you slide down, and then you apply that leverage. This is called a leverage. A joint lock, a leverage. You bend that hand back over itself, which twists the person's body in whichever way you want. And you can use this. You can grasp the hand, their fingers like this, and bend them back to bring them up, or twist it sideways to bring them to the side, or when you grab a person's appendage, when you grab their arm and you, you do that slip down to the wrist and then you apply a leverage, it twists them in whatever direction you want them to go. It's a joint lock. And in Chinese, it's called the, uh, the art of chin na, chin na. Okay, and Chinna is the same as, you know, it's just a different name in, in Aikido and different names and different arts, but it's it, what it basically boils down to is you're locking a person up by applying pressure to a joint or an appendage most likely in the direction that it's not supposed to go. In other words, you're 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 taking you're taking their hand or arm and you're you're binding it up in a situation where a pain is applied and then you, what you know whatever you move you you can move the person around forwards backwards up down you could throw them because they're they're focused in on the pain and moving and you're using that movement to catapult them into a circular motion. Imagine being caught in a whirlwind and then thrown off to the side. Imagine being, you know, having a dust, strong dust devil come and just twist you all around in a circular movement and then just throwing you out to the side, okay? That's basically what the dynamic sphere is in Aikido, okay? Projection, blending and projection of your energy and projection of the person's energy out to where you don't want them to be near you or to be a, a harm to you. Now, just because Morahayu Shiba developed Aikido and he uh, made it more passive, it originated as a very brutal uh, jujitsu type art or move or uh, martial art. Okay. Now let's say you know. Let's say uh, let's call that a linear. Uh, I mean a circular art. Now let's go to a linear art, and a linear art is more straight line type stuff, okay? And when you get into Kung Fu and Sang Tzu, and let's say the scar system of combat, this is, this is outright projection on a linear level mostly. 
it's moving right into the person's space and taking control, okay? If somebody gets within your wingspan, this is called the wingspan theory, if you stretch your arms out as far as they were, will go and turn in a circle, that's your inherent space, that's your wingspan, that's your uh, no-fly zone, let's say. Anybody that comes into that uh, zone is putting themselves in a bad situation. So when you, let's say, when you have somebody that comes up and gets in your face, you know that old saying, gets in your face. If they come up and they're yelling at you and they got their face in your face and they're trying to intimidate you, little do they know that they have put themselves into a very dangerous situation, okay? Because if they get that close, then what you can do is get inside their wingspan or their space or their... If they go to throw a punch, it doesn't make any difference because you're so close. They'd have to throw, try to throw a punch around like this or grab you or something. You have every opportunity to use all the techniques and uh, the let's say, kill moves or whatever you need to do at that point, it's very easy to apply those moves. So when somebody punches you, you're either outside their wingspan to where they can't reach you, or you get inside to where it passes you or uh, is unable to harm you. You get into their space. You step right into it. You get close. You get up close and personal. So anytime that anybody comes up and gets in your face, they're leaving themselves open for immediate annihilation and termination, <laughs> basically, if you know what you're doing, okay? And so, you know, this, this concept of space, this concept of space is very important. Getting inside the space or getting outside the space. Same thing with, let's say somebody pulls a firearm on you. Well, then that, that immediately has something to do with space as well. If they're farther away, well, then it's obviously going to be harder to control their actions okay if they're across the room and they're pointing a gun but if they're up close you see this in a lot of movies you know you see where a guy pulls a gun and sticks it up within the wingspan or within the space of another person well if they do that it's party over if you know what you're doing okay because all you have to do is do a side slip in Okay, away from that and deflect it and use a leverage and pop that gun right out of their hand and catch it in midair and you'll have it against them, okay? It's real easy to disarm somebody with a weapon, a knife or whatever if you know what you're doing. Knives to me uh, are a little bit more, to me they're... Uh, Let's say, you know, if, if a person's holding a gun, I'd rather, ha I'd rather face a gun almost than a knife because a knife has that sharp edge that even if you're trying to disarm them, there's a, there's a possibility that you can hurt yourself doing that if you don't know what you're doing, okay? Let's talk about, so let's talk about these linear moves, the linear art, the harder arts. They don't use the circular motion. They don't use the chi as much as they do just outright brute force. But if you know chi, if you've practiced the different arts, if you've practiced tai chi and you know how to use chi, you can always incorporate that into your moves even, even when you're doing the harder form of martial art. You can incorporate and you can blend whatever is appropriate for, for that situation. So that's why it's important to be able to synthesize and learn all kinds of different martial arts so that you can draw on you know, any arrow out of the quiver 
that you need. And that once you go through these motions, now there's another saying I kind of like too. It's like, do you practice a thousand moves one time or two times, or do you practice one move a thousand times? If you practice one move a thousand times, it is said that if you know that and it's so ingrained in you, and you use that one move whenever uh, anybody attacks you, uh, you most more than likely, since it's so ingrained and so natural, be uh, you will accomplish or you will you will be the victor, you will be the uh, predator, you will take them out because it's so ingrained. Now on that concept, you know, if you have ten moves and you practice them ten thousand times you get all of those moves ingrained. It's like a puzzle, okay? It's like a piece of the puzzle. And so when you get into a confrontation or a fight or an unexpected event, well, then you use whatever is appropriate for whatever situation you are in or whatever whatever they have to throw at you, whether it's a punch, a kick, a strike, a strangle, grabbing your shoulder or whatever now let's let's deal let's deal with let's talk about sucker punches let's talk about a sucker punch what if you're in a bar and somebody comes up and just blindsides you out of nowhere you're just standing there innocently and somebody just comes up and they give you no warning whatsoever and they come up and they just lay, blast you on the side of the jaw or something with a punch, okay? Just out of nowhere. Well, here's the remedy to that. When you have what they call negative proximity factor, you're never going to let yourself get into that situation. If you walk into a bar, unless you become inebriated, which is a very bad thing to do if you're in a dangerous situation or you're in a situation where you're new to the area or you're new to that bar or you're new to that nightclub or you're new to, it doesn't even have to be a nightclub it could be anywhere you always want to be aware okay you always want to have that negative proximity factor you feel the energy, okay, this is where the higher consciousness comes in, this is where meditation comes in, this is where shamanistic techniques come in of awareness and higher consciousness and that type of thing, because you feel, you have to learn to feel everybody's energy in the room. And basically, if you're a strong, strong person, when you walk through that door in the room, everybody feels your energy, big time. Okay, if you know what you're doing, if you're a lethal weapon walking around, when you walk through that door, your presence makes itself known. Okay, and some people will perceive that as a threat, but a lot of people will humble themselves and, and perceive that as uh, something they shouldn't fucking mess with. Okay, the silent type, you know, the deadly silent type. So, always be aware. You'll never get sucker punched if you're always aware of every moving entity and organism in that room and your head is on a swivel and your splatter vision is on, on high alert. Okay, and here's another, here's another technique that I teach in my book Emergence called splatter vision. And that's where you hold your arms out to the side and you kind of move your fingers like this. You hold it straight out to the side and you kind of, with a soft gaze, stare ahead off into the... And then you widen your gaze. You breathe and you relax and you widen your gaze until your peripheral vision can see both hands out here twiddling the fingers, okay, Now I'm going into it right now, okay? 
that's what you do and so you get what you call a uh, a wide angle view or a three almost a 360 man i can go way back i can go around and way back you get a view of what's going on around you you get a feel of what's going on around you all your senses have to be on high alert so if you're going into a bar and having a few just know that you're going to be dulling your senses I wouldn't recommend it. I, I don't recommend drinking in public places unless you're, you know, out to dinner and having a glass of wine or something. That's a different. But even then, you have to be aware. You can't let your guard down, okay? And, and so that's just a fact of life in this world that we live in, all right? So let's see. What else can I... Uh, wax on and wax off about here oh let's let's go into this spiritual aspect i can see i can impart all kinds of things to you without even going through forms you have to imagine what i'm talking about here you have to picture it in your mind now i did raise up the uh laptop here and i am able to like <clears throat> Let's say go back. I don't want to do too much here because I got the microphone on, but I can stand up and I can back up and I can show you different techniques. Be better if I had a partner. Anybody want to volunteer to be a dummy for a while? <laughs> Just kidding. The spiritual side of this is exactly kind of what I was just talking about, about the negative proximity factor, and then being able to, you can get to the point in your martial arts where you can actually control people in the room by just projecting different kinds of energy out. Feeling energy and projecting energy and melding with energy and, and, and all that kind of stuff. You, in fact, you can do this from a distance. You can do this stuff from a distance. And the only way that you can do that is if you practice what I taught earlier. You think, you think, uh, you think all this stuff that, that I'm imparting to you isn't going to be helpful to you? Or do you think that you could find this kind of stuff somewhere else on some other channel? Well, yeah, I mean, there's lots of good channels with techniques and martial arts and I encourage you to go to all of them but <clears throat> I'm coming in from a, from a more profound level from a, a shaman's level and from a higher consciousness level and uh, so I'm constantly presenting things to you that are useful that are useful and and if you were to sit down with a master or sit down with somebody and try to pick their brain about what you can do in certain situations and what you know what you should do and what what might be useful to you how, how often do you get a chance to do that now see you can e you can even come on this channel and you can you can contact me or you can Go to the show notes and, and get my email or contact me or even on this channel, you can make a comment about, well, what should I do in this situation or what should I do in that? Here's another thing. Once you learn this st stuff, once you learn to be a prolific martial artist and a prolific... Uh, shamanistic type person or whatever you don't advertise it i mean you don't when you're out rubbing shoulders with the public you're mr joe humble okay you're mr uh mr normie you know on the street you you don't know shit you don't advertise what you know okay That'd be like walking around saying, look at me, I got a weapon here, you know, I got a gun here, I'm going to show you I got my gun. Or, you know, you never come from a place of ego, you never, you never venture off into waters, unknown waters, 
you steer clear of any situation that could be dangerous. You basically uh, are appraised and take appraisal of every uh, little uh, nuance of any place you go into. <clears throat> Say like you go into Target or something. You know where all the doors are. You know where the back doors are. You know, you know where the back exits are. You know where there might be a uh, barricade, a natural barricade against any kind of onslaught of any kind of violence. But more more than anything, you're 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 Joe Humble, and you're you know basically you can even act afraid or whatever. Little do they know that this silence is a veil for deadliness and a veil for super violence and a veil for their worst nightmare. Okay, so you never show your cards, you know. You always keep these aces up your sleeve. Ah, so what else can I talk about concerning concerning the martial arts? Just the spiritual aspect is very important as well. I want to say that. I want to emphasize that because you can use this for protection on all kinds of level. Protection and projection. Protection and projection. Don't forget those two, the two P words. So I guess I'll kind of leave it there today. Things to think about a little bit more. You could consider this a lesson, you know. You can you can consider this sitting down with the master or your sensei and uh, picking his brain about what you should and should not do. The more you hear it, the more it's going to get in your mind. We'll discuss more about the march. I think I'm going to keep on this theme because in this world, uh, it, it basically covers everything. It covers everything you should know about protective bubbles, wingspans, being aware, all that kind of good shit. All right, I'll leave it there for now. Adios.